Missoula last night on Tatum. This is via uh, your Twitter page here. So um, I'm, I'm doing the best I can in terms of reading what you've put out there. There's more to this quote. I'm sure that's awesome. But in terms of what he put out there, quote, I thought today was a beautiful display of basketball from Jason. It will go overlooked and won't go in the most valuable category. My hat's off to him for knowing that's a way for us to win. And it feels like that along with your piece, which we'll talk about more in a second, it's like the next level of the Jason Tatum experience, right? Him being able to manipulate games without scoring the basketball. And there are some quotes in the next segment that we'll do um, that I want to highlight. But I, again, last night you look at defensively, you know, this picking on Jalen Brunson as, as best he could in terms of trying to slow him down. Jalen has had a terrific season. Reminds me so much of the Isaiah Thomas season where he finished fifth in MVP voting. Um, just a, a guy who's feels like he's just has every superpower in the world right now and just going against everybody and he's just the, the finishing, the shooting, the leadership, everything. It's just awesome. But Tatum was like, all right, now we're done with this. And he just shut him down for a little while. We saw that same display against Shea, although in a loss against Oklahoma City Thunder a couple months ago. Um, you're seeing Jason Tatum as a facilitator, right, instead of just a scorer. That quote last night, again, on the the – the uh, the highlight of your piece like just illustrates to me that Tatum is jumping up and in discovering that the best version of him is one that doesn't score a ton all the time and to see it on display recently I think has been amazing and I, and I think someone like you who's been there from his first minutes in the NBA to where he is now it must be like not like weird but it must be just amazing to see the evolution of Tatum in real time am I wrong on that no it's uh I mean this is what I saw for him years ago and I I think I I would have been really surprised and impressed if he got to this point at all in his career I think this where he is today is probably the best case scenario I had for him in year two and this was I think by year two, I, this was what I was projecting for him to be. And the, I think the fascinating part is that there's still a lot more that he can do to get better. So that then you're wondering, like, is he going to become the best player in the NBA? Or is, is he going to become, you know, on that pantheon level of can he become a multiple-time champion, multiple-time MVP, where we're looking at him the way we look at Jokic now, the way we look at Giannis now. Of like these were guys who actually were transcendent players that reshaped the NBA, and with the irony being that Tatum is kind of like the like, like classic modern prototype for a wing, while those guys are unicorn players who literally reshaped the league. Tatum, yeah, I, I really like that quote from Joe because it illustrates both why Tatum won't win MVP and why Tatum is the MVP is a Finals MVP player now and is different than where he was two years ago. And, you know, you alluded to it. He and I sat down at All-Star break, and we had a conversation that I thought was really fascinating about just how he has changed the way that he views himself and the way that he views the sport and how it correlates to winning. And with him, the reason why he won't win MVP is because a night like this one against the Knicks where he was a great playmaker and just did a great job of reading the game and bringing the game what it needs. He didn't put up a triple double the way that Jokic does every night, including on those kind of games. Or the way Shea does, where like Shea still is putting up insane numbers, even on the nights where he's taking a step back and being a facilitator. Because of the team that Tatum's on, he is he's not going to be putting those numbers up. Get your buckets with your first bet at FanDuel, America's number one sports book because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. His potential assists, his secondary assists are very, very good. They're you know they're up there in I think you know pretty close to that stratosphere where the other top playmaking wings are. It's not going to be like with Doncic and Jokic, who are you know the best point guards in the NBA, who and it's a heliocentric offense that runs for them, just like the opportunity and usage they have is just through the roof. And Tatum couldn't run that kind of system. Like they're better individually, and I don't really know how you 
like I don't know how you balance the Jokic and Doncic are better individually and they therefore do more individually so they're more valuable with like Tatum doesn't do those things but he does other things better than they do and the role doesn't call for him to do it but it's like I guess at the end of the day if the role doesn't call for you to do it the role doesn't call for you to do it and therefore he's not going to be MVP but that doesn't matter like if, if Tatum wins a championship he will probably win MVP at some point in his career like that's probably going to happen um I don't think it matters to validate him anyway and frankly ever since he got to the league he and I think I had this first conversation with him about it when he was like 20 it was always about the championship and he what I think what made it feel believable was he never he never pretended like he didn't care about being famous and being a star and being the face of the league and all that kind of stuff and he still cares about that but I think that's truly secondary to winning, piling up rings, chasing rings, trying to chase Kobe's count and MJ's count and all that kind of stuff. I think that he, you know, people were so, used to be so obsessed with him emulating Kobe. I think what he emulated was Kobe's success and, and winning and the rings and that image of Kobe holding the Larry O'Brien trophy with the Jeff Hamilton jacket on the shower. Like yeah. that's the thing that he chased. He chases that moment. And if you know, if you knew Kobe, um, which I, I barely knew Kobe, but I knew a lot of, I, I knew a lot of people that knew him very well and still and talk about him to this day because they were so impacted by him. And they like, like his legacy and what he imparted upon people was the value of winning and the value of leading a great champion and being a part of that. And even though I think, especially in Boston, he was, because a lot of Boston fans obviously did not like Kobe Bryant for many reasons, many of them were valid, um, they, they, they're they biased against him and they look at him as the ball hog that he certainly was for a long time. And I, I didn't like Kobe that much when I was really young and I grew up a Celtics fan. I used to be a Celtics fan before I became a journalist. And I thought Kobe was a ball hog. I didn't really like his game. And then I watched the way that he evolved with Pau Gasol, and I was like, oh, okay. Like, this is, this is like peak basketball. Like, this is, this is the dream wing in the NBA. It reminded me a lot of what I loved about MJ when I was a little kid. And I think Tatum is finally embracing that. And I think he's becoming what Kobe became when they had that second championship run, where he really looks at the game as he's trying to control the game and control all other nine people on the floor. And it's for creating winning rather than just scoring himself. And that's when Kobe was truly great. And that's when Kobe won multiple championships leading the team himself. And I think that Tatum has now gone for that evolution of like, he's no longer partnered with another great player like he was when he was younger. And that's when Kobe got those wins with Shaq. It's like now he has gone through all that, seen through all that. And he's understanding how do I do it myself in a leadership position with a bunch of other great players.